Hello, in this video I want to talk about how we can go a little bit further in terms of how we can contribute to the uh, chocolatey documentation by making use of local uh, dev container instances. So in a previous video uh, I spoke about how we can make use of uh, GitHub code spaces to make adding, updating and contributing to the chocolatey docs really simple via the use of a code space. So as a quick recap, a code space is, uh, uh, is magic, right? It's a, essentially a, uh, a container running in the cloud somewhere, uh, specifically set up and configured for the way that uh, I want to, uh, to do stuff on that container. So whether th wh whatever version of .NET Core I need or what version of Python or whatever version of PHP, I can define all of those things within uh, a dev container. Now, the way that I was showed, the way that I showed that running before was um, I used the default container that GitHub Code Spaces uh, provided, and what I found was that things just worked right. So there was no need for me to make any modifications to that because, thankfully, it just worked. So what we get out of the box then is this is me still in a browser. This is me in a browser looking at my dev container that's running in the cloud for me. Uh, and in there, I've then got a terminal where I can preview the documentation. I can make some changes through the, uh, uh, essentially what is the VS Code editor in the browser and everything just works. Now, the thing that I was missing in the last video was that, well, rather than relying on the uh, default container which GitHub Code Spaces provides me, which contains a lot of stuff uh, installed on that container that I don't actually need, I'm able to take much more finer grain control, and that's why I was kind of talking about before, and that's via this dev container folder. So if I click on this and I open up this uh, dev container.json file, let's get rid of this terminal a second, what you're able to do is you're able to define exactly what container instance you want to run. So what I've ended up doing is I've specified within this dev container is I'm going to use a Docker file and I want to use specifically uh, .NET Core 3.1 and I want to use specifically uh, Node version 14. So those are the two main components that I need in order for things for the documentation to work. Now I've defined them in here so that when my Docker file is run, uh, it uses those versions when it's setting up that container, right? So when I clicked on uh, new GitHub code space, GitHub code spaces actually use this definition to set things up and that's what's now running in the cloud for me. Now the reason I tell you all of that is because now that I have that set up, I can use that same dev container definition locally on my machine, right? Uh, uh, so I'm just going to make sure quickly that I've got uh, Docker running on my local machine. I should have done that before I started recording. Uh, but so now I'm going to remove this is me. This is my browser. I'm taking the browser out of the equation. So what I've got here now is my local VS Code instance, right? Now the only thing that I've installed onto my machine is Docker Desktop, and I've also installed an extension into Visual Studio. So if I click on that and look at what I've got installed, then what we'll see here is. I installed this extension, which is, it's actually a meta, uh, what's known as a, a meta uh, extension, it installs other things. So the remote development extension actually installs uh, a couple of other things, it's harder to see at the minute, but it installs the remote WSL, uh, the remote containers, and the remote SSH uh, extension. Now with all of those things installed in Visual Studio Code, as well as having Docker Desktop installed, I get the same GitHub Code Spaces experience, but locally on my machine. I've just closed Visual Studio Code and I don't really know why I did that. Let me just open up Visual Studio Code again. Apologies about that. Uh, but if I open up Visual Studio Code to that location, then what I'm going to get prompted, Visual Studio Code is now going to recognize that I have this dev container.json file along with the Docker file sitting beside it. And what it's going to prompt me down here is, well, do you want to reopen this uh, workspace inside a container? So that's exactly what I want to do. Because what this is going to give me now is it's going to take that uh, dev container.json file along with that Docker file. It's going to spin up an instance of that container running on Docker desktop. And then it's going to 
uh, run that container, having that container point at the files within this workspace, and then I get the exact same experience that I would get through GitHub code spaces, but locally on my machine. So I can make modifications to the files. I can run the preview server that I showed in previous videos. So I can do all the things I need to do to contribute to that documentation, but without the overhead of installing the specific version of .NET, the specific version of uh, Node, the specific version of Yarn, etc. All of those things are in that dev container definition, so I don't have to worry about them. So this is a really, really nice uh, way of um, running the development specifically of this uh, documentation site uh, in a way that I don't have to kind of pollute my machine with the, the specific version. So that means if I'm doing a different documentation, I'm doing a different project, then I can uh, use another dev container instance for that specific piece of uh, development uh, work that I'm doing. So uh, if I go back over to here, uh, or I look at terminal, sorry, then this, uh, let me just wait for that to come up just to prove what's going on here. If I do uh, npm dash dash version here, then I'm in this dev container instance, I'm running 6.14.15. If I then do node dash dash version, then it'll be 14 point something. And if I do .NET info, then in this dev container instance, I'm running uh, 3.1.414. But if I bring over this window, which might be a little bit harder to see, but if I do those same commands, this is on my own machine. So if I do npm version here, uh, then I have locally, I have version seven, whereas I had version, uh, what did I say, 6.14. If I do node dash dash version, uh, I have version 15 of node, but I had 14 on my dev container instance. And on my local machine, if I do .NET info, then I've got lots of versions of .NET Core installed because I've gone through multiple iterations of uh, those versions. But on my specific dev container instance, I don't have all that extra baggage. I have specifically what's needed in order to uh, run this machine. So then to fi fi finish that off, if I then run the preview.sh, which I showed again in previous videos, so I encourage you to go back and watch those videos, that preview.sh will now run uh, Cake, uh, which builds uh, the website, which is built on static. Uh, it will then run Yarn to ensure that all of the client-side dependencies are all uh, run it and set up where they need to be. And then the end result of that is it'll spin up a web server, and that web server will be uh, pointed at the local files, the local output files that have been created by uh, static, uh, and everything just works. So as I, I'll let that finish out, but as a quick recap, uh, the benefit here is that if you have access to GitHub code spaces, GitHub code spaces will use that same dev container.json file and that Docker file. So if you're running in GitHub code spaces, nothing changes from that point of view, but you get the benefit of being able to run both in GitHub code spaces as well as locally on your machine using Docker desktop. Um, so it's a really compelling uh, setup. And I know that there's some folks on the team who uh, have struggled with getting the exact right setup uh, for getting the documentation site up and running uh, because they've had a different version of Node, a different version of Yarn, etc. cetera. Um, with this configuration, and that configuration goes along with the repository, with that configuration set up, the only two things that need to be installed are Docker Desktop and the uh, VS Code extension, which uh, informs uh, VS Code how to make use of that dev container.json file and that Docker file definition. Um, so that's it. Um, if, like I say, so if, to, if you do want to help out with the uh, uh, chocolate documentation, I definitely uh, would welcome that and uh, that, that, to have that help. Um, and what I'm hoping to have shown in this series of videos is uh, the ways that you can go about that. So you, uh, you can either make changes directly onto the uh, website through the GitHub user interface. Uh, you could use github.dev, which provides an interface for making multiple changes uh, at once. You have the option if you have access to the, uh, uh, the it's, not, it's no longer in beta anymore, so it is now with general availability. If you have access to GitHub code spaces, then you have that option. 
And then if you don't have access to the GitHub code spaces, but you still want to have that containerized setup, then you can absolutely uh, use this approach here that uh, you can clone the repository and immediately uh, open it in Visual Studio Code and what you're seeing here will happen for you as well. Uh, and the final one, or final option, if you want to do lots and lots of uh, contributions into uh, the chocolate docs, then you absolutely have the option of installing the specific version onto your uh, local development machine uh, in order to have them always there uh, available to you. Uh, that last one takes the longest. Uh, this one uh, is really quick. We've done this just within the, uh, the timing of this video and we're currently at around 10 minutes. The last part here is just the actual uh, building of the site. Uh, the GitHub code spaces takes hardly any time at all because uh, all of that infrastructure is in the cloud. You just need to press the button and have access to it uh, to make use of it. Um, the direct editing or through the GitHub user interface or through github.dev, that's for much smaller contributions. Not to say that you can't do it that way, uh, but the editing experience is not as good uh, as if you had uh, all of the things locally on your machine or running through GitHub code spaces. So that's hopefully enough talking. Uh, I'm gonna hopefully get to the last point, which is the uh, running preview of the site. Uh, I want to show that just before we uh, close off this video, <coughs> because what will happen is that once it gets to the point where uh, it's built everything, uh, Visual Studio Code should pop up to say that it has uh, started a new process, which is a web server. And then you should be prompted down in the bottom right hand corner here uh, with the option to open that in a browser. So I want to show that last part uh, before uh, signing off. So bear with me just uh, one more minute while hopefully that takes place. Uh, I haven't got too much more to say other than we need to wait for this. <laughs> uh, if you do have any questions about any of this setup and how I'm doing things, uh, definitely feel free to reach out. Uh, but if this doesn't happen soon, I'm going to stop the recording because I literally have nothing else to say about this. I was looking to see if I had a pause button on the stream, but I don't or I, I i don't be able to, I, I don't know where it is so i don't really want to hit stop there we go it's, it's, it's i see i saw movement it's the last final part of uh, the static process which is running the analyzers uh one thing to point out is once the initial build of uh static runs uh subsequent changes runs much faster because static doesn't have to rebuild everything from scratch but this, we're literally at the last part of the static build. I kind of want to show the final uh, execution of it. Here we go. So that's the final part of the static build. And at this point it says uh, your application uh, running on port is available. What do you want to do? So I'm going to say open in browser. So at this point uh, down in the browser that I had open earlier, it's now running that uh, local version of the site where you can see what changes you've made. You can see if what the changes are had the impact that you wanted to, and if not, go back to Visual Studio Code, you tweak it again, it'll show it again in the preview window, uh, ready to go. Uh, so thanks for bearing with me through that. If you've got any questions about that, uh, feel free to reach out. Uh, but if not, for now, thank you very much.